Welcome. I'm Paul Zare, a professor, martial artist, and author at the University of Victoria. And I'm here to tell you a story about the science of being a superhero, or superhero science, really. And there's a couple stories within stories that I want to talk about. The first thing is my own backstory, because since we're going to talk about superheroes, even though I'm not actually a superhero, I want to talk a little bit about how I got to the point of talking to you right now about superheroes and about science and about what it means to be human and what it means to be just a little bit more, maybe. When I was really young, I got interested in superheroes because my mom was already interested in superheroes. She grew up way back when superhero comic books were just starting, when folks like Batman and Superman and Captain America were young in terms of where they lived in popular culture. And my mom was super into superheroes. And so she bought me comic books when she'd go grocery shopping. And that got me really interested in superheroes because I was enchanted by the stories I'd read and the little things I'd hear about Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and The Flash and all these different characters. And that actually got me interested in martial arts because I saw martial arts as a way to maybe get some of the skills and abilities of some of those characters I was reading about. Iron Fist and Shang-Chi and Batman and Batgirl, all the different things they could do. And once I started doing martial arts, I got super fascinated about what the heck was going on in my body. How was it that I could do all these different things that I suddenly seemed to be able to do that I couldn't do before? That I was training and getting better at stuff and I was fascinated by that. So I went off to university to study the science of the human body and kinesiology. And from there, I got really interested in the stuff that's controlling all those movements I was doing and where all the learning of the movements was actually happening up in my brain and my spinal cord, going out to my muscles and controlling everything. So I did a PhD in neuroscience to try and understand how the human body actually worked. And especially when it comes to learning how to do movements and in my scientific career about how to help people get back movement that they'd lost if they'd had injuries. But all that stuff started because of thinking about superheroes. And eventually I tried to put some of that stuff together and started to write books uh, about science and superheroes. So I wrote a book initially about Batman called Becoming Batman, the possibility of a superhero, which is all about training and what our bodies can actually do. And we're gonna talk about that when we train. I also wrote a book about Iron Man, who stands for technology and the idea of how technology can be used by our bodies. Even if we don't have an Iron Man suit of armor to fly around in, we do have technologies that can help us do other things. I also explored the idea of Captain America and the idea of changing our biology and seeing what we could actually do to do the most we could with the human that we are. And all of these ideas, though, are central and uh, sit on the idea of the fact that these superheroes are all human, just like you and I. They were a lot richer, probably, than you and I. If we think about Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne, the backstory characters for Iron Man and for Batman. But the point is that they get us really interested in them largely because we think maybe we could get bits and pieces of that. Could we actually do some of that? And would that really reveal for us ways that we can explore our true potential to do as much as we could possibly do? And during that process of writing books like that into the main part of the story today, I wrote a book called Project Superhero, along with a friend of mine, Chris Pern, who illustrated uh, the book. And I'll talk about that a bit more. Because the idea of thinking about superheroes and science, it's really about the idea of the science of human potential, the ability we have, all of us, to be able to do different things. But what does that actually mean when we think about exploring being human? Well, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about the idea that I want you to keep in mind throughout today and beyond, that there really is a superhero in you bits and pieces of these characters, there's some realistic parts to it. And they tell us a little bit about what it means to be human. And what I want to explore is some of the ideas that we have in this book that were 
was a passion project between myself and Chris Pern, who uh, is a Hollywood animator and film director for movies like Claudia the Chance of Meatballs, Claudia the Chance of Meatballs 2, and a whole host of other classics like Arthur Christmas and so on. We just met by chance and we were talking about projects we were working on. And we came up with this idea to explore a 13 year old's journey in grade eight that involves science and superheroes and martial arts and discovery and really exploring what it means around the equality of being human. The idea that those human based superheroes, just like us, have the ability to do so many different things because we're all human. And because we're all human, the science behind what it means to be an animal in the world, like a human or other animals, like our, our pets even, we're, we're connected to them because we're all animals. And we have the ability to do all kinds of things and to harness the nature of being human, to put it in different directions. Now, Jessie wasn't sure where she wanted to go with her life. She's in grade eight and she's trying to explore what it means to be uh, a young person trying to go from grade eight into high school and all kinds of other things and having a group of friends that lots of kids do doing different things. She was also super interested in comic books and liked to ask a lot of questions. And one of the things that came together for Jesse was the idea that came from two different projects she had at school that had to do with exploring what superheroes really mean to society or what do they really mean in terms of reality? What kinds of bits and pieces of different superheroes actually are realistic or can inform us about different things. This was a fantastic news to Jesse and some of her friends because they liked superheroes and the idea of becoming bits and pieces of those things, but they never really thought about what that might actually mean to do in practice. So it means exploring science and the idea of what it means to do things like training, what it means to do things like learning and getting skills and also responding to injuries. And if we think about training, we can use really extreme examples of people doing exercises. And we see here the idea of running on a treadmill and punching a heavy bag and doing all kinds of things that Jesse's imagining herself doing while she's also thinking about the science of what it means to be human. Because that science of what it really means to be human has to do, as I mentioned earlier, with the idea of potential and the ability to change and the ability to learn things and the ability to get stronger. And the idea that when we take our mind and try to get ourselves doing something new, we can learn all kinds of skills and abilities and use those to make ourselves better at whatever we're doing. Um, whether that doing of something is something like doing martial arts that Jesse learns about here she is thinking about the idea of judo and learning a little bit about rolling around and how to keep safe when she's falling. Or maybe it means a little bit like learning about how to do something, some kind of empty hand martial art like karate or something like that, where it's about learning skills that are outside of what she used, usually was doing and pushing the boundaries, exploring what it means when you try to do something and it's really hard at first. Because of course it's hard at first. If you haven't been doing something, Starting to doing that thing is challenging, but because of the science of how the human body works, it gets easier the more we try to do it, the more we practice, the more we train, the more we push ourselves a little bit outside of where we are usually every day and where maybe we're more comfortable, but by trying to get skills and abilities and, and pushing ourselves, we wind up getting in places where we can do more and more and more and pursue some of the ideas that we might like to see in the world and things we might want to become and places we might like to go and things we might like to do. Of course, along the way on those kinds of journeys that Jesse and her friends certainly explored is the idea that sometimes uh, when we try to push ourselves, we also can get injured. And one of her good friends uh, named Kate in the story uh, winds up having a skiing accident and winds up with a concussion. He hits his head, although of course you don't have to hit your head to have a concussion, but in his case, he did. And we explore her ideas of what it means when a person's brain gets moved around inside of your skull, which is what happens when 
your body comes to an abrupt start or stop from where it used to be and how we have long lasting effects that can happen and that need attention. So we don't hurt ourselves further when we have had an injury and we are more um, open to having other injuries, how to take time to recover from those things. And of course, the time to recover is about the science of what the nervous system and the brain and the spinal cord and other parts of the, the body are doing to fix themselves up after there's been an injury. And all that takes time. Usually we're pretty impatient. Jesse learns that if somebody has an injury to a nerve that controls you know, muscles in the body, it repairs itself sometimes, but really slowly. So we can see here that she's really impatient, wanting her friend to get better faster. But it takes time, just as it took time and takes time to get skills and abilities and to improve herself through training, which she was trying to do in the story where she's trying to learn what would it really mean to try and become something like Batgirl? To tap into the idea of training and getting the martial arts skills and getting stronger, what would that really entail? How would that go? What would that feel like to do? And she gains a lot of confidence, but also a little impatience that she has to overcome when she's trying to both get stronger and improve her abilities, and also when she's trying to think about um, how to help her friends and her friends when they've got injuries. Throughout the whole experience that Jesse and her friends explore, they have a little tournament to think about how do we debate the idea of different superheroes and their strengths and abilities and have a, uh, a way to think about which superhero is the best or at least the best for them in a way to understand what do they represent about helping people? Because one of the key things that they learn about superheroes is that there's usually a, a reason the heroes are the heroes that they are and they do things in society and they try to help. They're trying to do things to make society better and to make things better for other people, which is a key message about learning and about adapting that um, Jesse and her friends take away from their own stories. And one of the things that's in, 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 in part of all the ideas around science and superheroes and, and training and the wonderful way that our bodies can do all kinds of things when we try to learn something, whether it's a, a martial arts move or it's a math equation or it's a way to be kinder to other people. All those things are causing our body and brain to work a little bit differently uh, when we just practice at doing that. And one of the great things about that, which comes back to the idea that Jesse and everybody else usually who's interested in superheroes thinks about, and especially those superheroes um, I like all kinds of superheroes and so do Jesse and probably so do you. Um, but some of these superheroes like Captain America, like Iron Man, like Batwoman, Batgirl and Batman, because they are those, their backstories are they're human. It really pitches to us the idea that some of the things they could do, maybe we could do too, because we're human also. And so what it really gets at is this idea of the science of equality, the idea that we're all equal when it comes to trying to do different things, that we should all have the same opportunities, that we all adapt in similar ways because we are all similar folks regardless of our backgrounds. And going beyond the idea of the science of equality, if we flip it around, what we're really learning about too is the equality of science because science is about observations and discovery and things that exist whether we know they're there or not, whether we think we have the capacity to understand them, whether we come from different backgrounds, different representations, different ways of thinking, different ways of looking at things. Science is a great equalizer and is all about treating folks uh, the same and allowing opportunities. It should be for allowing opportunities for everybody to explore who it is that they want to be, just like Jesse did in her story. And I explored in explain to you a little bit my own backstory about how I got to be the person sitting here and talking to you right now. And one of the key things about exploring that idea and trying to get a passion for different aspects of science and how that can be a way that we can explore all kinds of opportunities and ways to enrich ourselves and the world, it really means trying to figure out bits about us and trying to discover 
and find your own passion that can help guide you towards this journey that you'll be on in your own life towards trying to figure out where is that bit of superhero in you that you can tap into and think about exploring and improving your life and the life of those around you. And just as Jessie did in her own journey, we can think about the idea of being true to yourself. That's a key part of finding that passion and capitalizing and moving forward and using science and experience to help us get somewhere. It's about being true to ourselves and finding ourselves in that journey. When we do that, we start to realize different things that are gonna help us and help us really be that, take that bit of the bat that we have within us and find it and use it to become a better person. Not just a better person around whatever that superhero represents in terms of what we see, like being able to outrun people or help people by climbing or doing martial arts or driving fast cars or whatever the case may be, but rather about how do we do things in our daily lives that can actually enrich both what we're doing and everybody else in our society. How we can work on being more kind to other people to help them by our kindness. And part of that is, even though I mentioned Jesse had some difficulty with this one, about being patient and about um, being helpful. These are all things that we can try to do to help ourselves and to help others. And that together, when we think about the journey of the science and the superhero in you, it's about exploring all those things, whether we're young or old, or as I said before, when it comes to equality, no matter the background, these things are part of what it means to be human and moving forward as a human. So the story that I've tried to tell you today about exploration and about the science of the human body and about moving forward and doing different things is a story that we can all use to inspire different things that we might do in our everyday lives. To find that bit of superhero that we all have deep inside of us and use it for something good for ourselves and for our society and for the greater good as we move forward. And that really is a very superhero kind of way to frame some of these things. So I hope you got a little bit about some inspirational points for your own lives and that moving forward, you can try to think about just trying to take it step by step, just like Jesse did, working towards trying to get some of the skills that Batgirl had to help her improve her life and to help others. Thanks so much for listening to me today. And I look forward to seeing where you guys go in your own journeys. Thank you.